Hello, and welcome to another episode of my blog. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. And what this does is it creates virtual machines on your computer. Now, if you see, I have a few things open right here on my NordVPN. So I am connected to a VPN. This allows me to basically connect to the internet without anybody knowing my own IP address, which is a safe thing to do for what we're going to be doing later today. Um, also, I have Task Manager up here in the corner so we can see it. Here is the Nor the um, Oracle Virtual Box. So let me, um, I had one running earlier today. So this is a copy of Windows 7 running on this Virtual Box. Whoosh. Oof -duh. It's taken a lot of CPU power. So I have this set to a fairly high resolution. So right there we can basically do YouTube. It also has its own um, allocation. So if you look right here, we've allocated to it 4 gigs of RAM. We've allocated two processors. So when you look at my regular CPU here, the actual CPU on my computer, you're going to quickly see that we have eight logical processors and um, change graph to logical processors. There's all eight of them. But for this particular copy here, we're only running two processors. So when someone clicks on performance, you only see two gra in the graph right there and four gigs of RAM. So this is a much more narrowed down type thing. I've also done a, a couple other little things here. Wow. I always remember how much I dislike Windows 7 at this point. Um, Go to properties on computer. So it is an i7 4770S, which is my actual processor. Of course, Windows is activated, everything else. Um, but what's interesting is I've done a little tweak here in device manager. Let me bring that over a little bit more. So it used to have a couple little things that made it look like it was an actual. Um, box, but we don't want if some if I let somebody remote into here, it does say VBox CD ROM, that is one. But standard VGA grafter. I wonder if we update the drivers if that works. Nope, it just like standard VGA graphics adapter. All right, cool. And of course, down here processors. So anybody who knows this is an eight core processor, it's going to be pretty obvious. So what's the whole point of doing a virtual box? Well, there's millions of uses. Um, first off, you can install whatever you want on this machine here, um, close this machine, and send the file that is this entire computer with everything. It's all stored on one file on my, comp on my actual computer. So I could take this machine and send it anywhere I want in the world, really. Now, um, Right here we have all these different ones. So it also lets you run multiple virtual boxes simultaneously. Let's see, this one here I only give it one gig of RAM for uh, Ubuntu 4, Ubuntu 18.4. So that's a pretty old version of it. And let's see what it looks like when it boots up. And it looks pretty much like Ubuntu, like a blank screen right now. Let's see what it does. I don't exactly remember what this one looks like and I'm going to be really hard pressed to actually remember what the password is. Yippee doo! <laughs> so, but one of the fun things you can do with um, once you have a virtual box is you can kind of scam back scammers. Um, and I've done that. Oh great! I must not have cleanly closed it last time I was playing with it. And these are actual computers. Of course, you know, an entire operating system takes up a pretty hefty amount of hard drive space, so this stuff isn't small. Um, but this is, you know, for being an older computer, this is a decently fast computer. And we, as you can tell over here, you know, we, have, we got 16 gigs of RAM. We're only using 13.6. Uh, these virtual boxes do use a lot of RAM. But I do also have uh, four separate hard drives installed. Uh, the first one being an SSD, and this gives us a total of about 10 uh, terabytes of storage. So with 10 terabytes of storage, I'm not really worried about um, anything about this right now. So pretty much we're just hammering the SSD. Nope, we're hammering disk zero, which is our, my uh, two terabyte hard drive. So here we go. 
Emerald. Okay, here's where we have to figure out what the password is. Is it a two-letter password? No. Maybe a big, long five-letter password? Oh, boy. Hmm. Let's just push play. Push enter by itself. Sorry, did not match. Well, this is going to be a short video if I can't figure out how to get into that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, but that's not what we're here for anyway. So what we want to do is we want to... These scammers, they love to do things. Um, you know, scam old people, scam... Um, how, let's see, let's just do something fun. How to clean... Mm -hmm. How to clean my computer. Okay, cool. So, of course... Luckily, Google has been working really hard lately... Uh, making it a lot more efficient. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I said I said the name Google and my phone lit up because it thinks I want to talk to it. Um, let's see, what would be a good way to try to find some sort of hacker? Man. It thinks I'm in Maricopa County, which it is right. Let's see. Use precise location. Let's see. Where does Google think I am? No. Find me. Nope. Can't do it. Anyway, this is... So we're running an old version of Chrome sitting on Windows 7 running in VMware VirtualBox running on my Windows 10 machine which is fully updated so that's a lot of fun um, another thing I want to tell you which is interesting I just purchased this microphone um, this I literally unboxed it three minutes before I started doing this video so if you think um, this is a pretty cheap $30 microphone USB from Amazon it was the one that Amazon recommended and um, so far pretty happy with it you know I've only, I, I played I played a made a demo video and um, tested different volumes I I do know it's gonna pick up everything and there is a a couple fans on my video card and stuff so okay cool well I don't want to bore you all to death so let's just find um, let's see how to How to download screensavers. Okay, cool. Man, I remember you used to ask for free screensavers and Google would light up all over the place with viruses and stuff. So here what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally, kind of intentionally looking for something that's virusy, spammy. Um, why don't we ask for, let's see, for start now. Of course, you and I think of a screensaver as an actual software program that runs. Well, maybe that's what this is. Yeah. Click continue to get these free tools and MyWay.com update on your Chrome new tab. Wow. <laughs> that was that was pitiful. <laughs> um Let's see. Click continue. Why not? Click add to Chrome to continue. You want to click add the Chrome? Yes. Let's add the Chrome. Let's get infected. I don't know how bad this one is. Let's see. Chrome Web Store. Okay. Man. Oh, it actually has a five-star rating. Not that bad. Well, hmm. gosh, it's slow. We are maxing out the processor here. So we can probably go back to our real computer. Ah, jeez. Scroll up. So even though it only looks like two cores here, it's pretty much maxing out all my processors. That's not good. I also put some games on here and some other stuff, so it definitely looks like a real computer. Uh, let's see. Maybe we should try... Free hacking tools. Yes, yeah, so let's pretend we're a hacker. Mm. 
Ooh, here we go. Hacking tools from India. That's got to be good. Want to learn hacking? Hacking trainer. No, that's okay. Mm. I might not. Yeah, let's see. Floss bites? What the heck? No. Okay, let's pick the one that has an ad. Because maybe if it has an ad, they're making enough money. Come on. Well, their site sucks. Mint floss. Thanks for watching our videos. How to contact the IRS. Let's see. Because I know a lot of these um, call center companies. Mm, that's going to be an article. <clears throat> a lot of these call center companies, they like to um, talk about IRS because of people, I guess. You know, the IRS makes people pay attention. So, best company, if you owe, huh. that looks interesting, T-E-O-M-A-U-S, man, I remember it used to be so easy to fall into some really spammy website, and I'm actually having a hard time getting scammed, wow, it's amazing. Let's see. So these actually go to where it says they want you to go. That's pretty interesting. All right, let's just click on that one. So this is kind of weird. It's like a little search engine. T I O M A. I don't know. It's like a little search engine. And it basically just copies the Google search engine. Well, we have a lot of RAM on this computer, so even though 4 gigs is being used. Oh, jeez. Okay. Download free movies. Maybe that'll get us into something spammy enough. I don't know. I don't, I've never been to these sites, so what's going on? Come on. Well, YouTube, that's how you download free movies. Yay, YouTube. Sony Crackle. Netflix, that's where you get free movies. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Well, we're just hunting. Anyway, it's always a lot safer doing this stuff in a virtual box because then if something does, you know, they can cannot infect or do anything to my computer... You know, if, if you're ever doing anything, you want to be behind a VPN is level one security. And then um, the next level of security is you want to run the actual, you know, your target computer within um, a virtual box. Because between the two of that, you know, they can't get my data. They cannot get on my network. They're, they're, you, you know, you'll be able to see some of the other computers on the network. I have opened it up. That is an option you can do how open you want it to be to show the rest of your network so let's see if we do start run you know slash slash gamma I don't know if that's gonna even work let's do start run CMD net stat so it's giving me a few oh wow it's like a local 10.0 network see can't receive can't connect to gamma let's see if it connect to any of the other main, main computers on our network. Nope, can't connect to Epsilon either. 
Well, so basically, I must have this one set up as isolated, which is probably where we want to be. So it's isolated, yet we can access the internet. And here we go. I've been watching a lot of videos about hackers and how they do this. Unfortunately, we're never given, like, um, um, call to fix computer now. Call Microsoft. We'll call Microsoft to fix my computer. Wow. Google has really up their game. Google, it used to be so bad. Like, you would type something like this, and literally half of your stuff would be, uh, would be actual malware and things to get you in scams. You know, I haven't really searched for it for a while. So, I don't know if there have been I-O-L-O... Let's see. Download and scan. Okay, it's going to download a 10 meg file. Also available at all these other places. Well, this one might actually be legit. Let's see. So, this is a basically a freshly reloaded System Checkup Installer. Let's try it. Powered by System Mechanic. This is probably a legit one. I accept. So, one thing that you might be find interesting here is um, before I started doing all this, I made an exact copy of this particular um, Windows 7 installation. So if I want to, like say if I screw something up or something happens, all I have to do is delete the one I'm running right now and clone this backup, which is as simple as just right clicking on and going clone. And that gives me another copy of the operating system for them to do it. So, okay, I'm trying to get into trouble here. It's just not working. Okay, well, here are some things it thinks are around me. That's not even close to where I live. Where I live is very far away from anywhere on this map. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so we don't want any scams. Let's see, we don't, we don't want any of these websites that tell you about scams. We want to actually find. InfoWeb, Just Answer, come on. Geeks on site, hmm. Ask. Simply, like simply safe. Hmm. Okay. So this IO program pretty much looks like it's finished. I'm pretty sure it's a legit program, so we can, you know, we're going on the adventure together, so let's test this stuff out. If you don't care, just fast forward a few minutes. What is your optimum potential? Available memory. Yes, we know it sucks. Well, there we are. Okay. Okay. We're kind of also kind of testing out a lot of these programs, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to, you know, even programs like this sometimes, let's see how many scan, how many problems they think out. Yes, 188 problems. Yes. Really doubt it. So, um, well, okay, broken internet connections are fine. So it looks like all the problems are Windows junk files, so... Let's see, find out now. Of course, it's going to say, hey, would you like to pay us some money? Who 
who wants to bet they're going to ask for money right here? We, this is a computer with no problems at all. Just got loaded. Like, a couple days ago. And then they want, oh, it's a, you know, let's... We found all these problems. Let's do it. I mean, I know, yes, yes, this is a legit program. And this is what legit people do. And it still seems kind of, you know, sketchy. I wouldn't do this. You know, this can't be as bad as that anyway. So, let's see. Still can't find any good scam site. This is actually like running in like almost like a browser. Okay, so let's see, uh, are we interested in seeing their sales policy? I know, most people on YouTube love really succinct videos. They just want to get the details, sorry, and th that's... Wow. Okay. So we'll give up on this program here. Um, we'll uninst well, we're just going to delete the entire thing later on. Wow, that was an annoying website. Help me fix Windows hack. Okay, cool. How to, okay. Never heard of Alpher. Who is Alpher? We're kind of mostly, originally this is going to be a hacking video and now we're getting more into um, just kind of reviewing. Here we go, 80 bucks, wow. Wow, okay, accept, whatever. Is it just me or is this website really slow? Yeah. By their ads, they're definitely more spammy. What the heck? Why is all the text redacted? Wow. Now we're getting we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's download my video converter. It's the pop up. Mm. We don't need any notifications from them. This might be it. Click add to Chrome to continue. Uh, let's allow pop-ups. We need a pop-up. Done. Click add to Chrome. It looks like Chrome blocked its pop-up. Let's try it again. Click add to Chrome to continue. Audio, so bad. There we go. No reviews. Eh, had the Chrome, why not? Sure. Add extension. What do we care, right? Yeah, we don't want to log in. Ah, so it did install a task, a, a bar. I hate these bars. Clipchamp. Zazamar. So it did a lot of things here. This is how what people do. They want to convert a video or something. Now they're stuck with this bar on Chrome as an extension. You know, and so we, we help people. This is one of the major things that, <clears throat> you know, people used to always have problems with. You can just go to extensions right here and all you gotta do is hit this button to turn it off and then you can remove the extension. Um, you know, that's really, really simple, and that's, but people really freak out about this. This is something that was always a, an issue for a long time. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We don't want to cast anywhere. Wrong button, sorry. All right, cool. So, let's, looks like they're trying to spam people with 
You know, let's search on Macy's. Like, really? Macy's is, like, almost dead. Daily deals. Gotta need daily deals for my video converter program. <laughs> anyway, I just sit here and enjoy how people are so rude. Coupon Ventures. Um, man. <clears throat> you could really go down a rabbit hole on this one. How to hack into Windows. Ooh, here we go. We gotta see. I don't understand why they just grayed out all their text. There's an Amazon logo every now and then. Or we're just having an adventure. I always love it when the very first thing they want you to do is download a tool from the Windows Club. Hmm. Yeah, this might be kind of cool. You know, I'm also doing this on this computer, so, um... You know, if anybody ever looks at it, there's a little bit of actual usage on it. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, by the way, a pig Disney Plus starts here in a couple hours. Two more hours till we get Disney Plus. I've already signed up. Um, I'm really excited about that. I think that's going to be kind of a cool thing. I don't know how... Okay, we got to YouTube because of that link. So maybe if we click a little bit further. So if you're one of their victims, you know, when somebody calls and they're calling from Microsoft or they're calling saying they're the IRS, especially... You know, if they have a really heavy accent, which, you know, sounds like they're not from the United States, there's a pretty good chance they're not. And there's a pretty good chance you really shouldn't give them any of your information. You know, any only give them stuff that is either incorrect or that you wouldn't mind basically giving to a criminal. Because that's who they pretty much are. And... You know, it makes it very, very hard, obviously, for companies that are trying to do legit business over the phone. Um, luckily, I'm not doing uh, so much over the phone business. We're, we mostly do our stuff in person. But, you know, it, it, it definitely makes it difficult to figure out who to trust and who not to trust. So my general rule of thumb is if somebody calls you asking for data, you know, social security number or whatever... Um, if it's somebody you want to do business with, try to get them to email you their information and, um, do a little bit of research on it. You know, look up the company, look up the URL, go to their website, make sure that that's the information that they want. And then make sure you send them back their, the information, um, over, um, make sure you send them back the information over to email. Um, I wouldn't send your social security number over to email, but once you kind of find out that they're who you think they are, and, um, you know, it's probably fine to give them their information if, if you think that you want to do business with that company. So, like, for example, I have a lot of people, because, you know, I run a, a computer business, obviously, and people are always calling me up trying to offer me better deals on my debt. So they call me up and, you know, and I know for a fact right off the bat that 80% of them are scammers. You know, they're calling from data centers, just trying to get leads. They get paid to get leads. Um, but I also know for a fact that there's a ton of money out there in the world. And, um, you know, I'd like to get a, a lot of that, a little bit of that low interest money. So it makes it very hard for me to figure out who, who's somebody I can actually trust 
and do business with over the phone and who's somebody I would say, yeah, I'm not giving them my information. So it makes it, it makes it a little bit harder. Oh, jeez. Still looking for somewhere to find a... My goal of this video, Bob Vila. Wow, look at that. Bob Vila has a website, and somehow I got there. Um, you know, I've been kind of okay, so let's see. What would somebody who would be a typical victim coupon deals? Um, deals on prescription... Oh, that gave me an idea there. I'll tell you something, guys. And they are not... They are not helping me at all. You know, this is not a company that I would recommend to you guys if I didn't use it myself. And um, they're not paying me at all. I don't monetize any of my YouTube channels. But I hate the monopolies and how people are scammed. So if you ever want to get glasses, just go to Zenny. Um, these glasses came from Zenny. I don't know if you can see right there my glasses. Of course, I can't see my screen when I'm holding my glasses, but um, <clears throat> until something else better comes along, Zenny's where I'm getting all my glasses. So if you need um, a deal on glasses, that just brought me up another point. You saw right there, it did a pop-up 10% off. That's because this was a freshly loaded co computer and didn't have a cookie saying that I've been to this website before. So it offers me a 10% off deal. Now the interesting thing is um, you can use virtual boxes to create fresh computers and also create multiple computers that you can even spoof the locations for using the uh, VPN software. So when I use my VPN software, I can tell it to connect to different servers and I can pretend I'm in, you know, Florida or I can pretend I'm in New York or I can pretend I'm in Europe. Um, do whatever you want to do there. And um, what that does for you, especially like airline ticket companies, they're really, really, really sensitive. So if you've never been there, <clears throat> they're always trying to get the most money. So if they have no information on you, they might give you a lower price because they want to entice you to become their customer. But if you're someone who's already been to their site 10 times and bought 10 tickets, you might be paying a much higher price. But what's nice about them is once you add it to the cart, then you go and log into your account. They're going to keep the price the same because they don't want to expose the game. <coughs> also, another really interesting thing about airline tickets um, just on an aside, you know, I'm just going to give you a lot of good information since you're spending the time watching me anyway while I'm going here. Um, but while you're on, um, if you're shopping for an airline ticket during the day, they figure that business people are going to pay more for airline tickets and they're a lot less price sensitive. So the airline servers actually increase the prices during business hours and then decrease them. So if you're sitting here at 2 in the morning, like I am right now, and we go and we look for a flight, you know, in many, many cases, especially for domestic flights, there's going to be a significant difference in how much you're going to pay. So um, just keep that in mind next time you shop for airline tickets. Just a lot of little bit of advice. I used to read um, this one little newsletter. It was a really, really cute newsletter. And it was only like six or seven pages long. And the, the, prescription, the subscription fee was pretty hefty, about $30 a year. And they would send it out in the mail. And it just had all these itty-bitty little tips on how to save money and basically living on the cheap. I, mean, I don't know how, um, how, they're gonna, how they survived when the Internet came out because all that same data was available there. So, we're still looking Maple Leaf Nets. I don't know who it thinks I am. Uh, you also know that basically anything you do on the internet, they start tracking you. They create a profile based upon your information for the computer. So, now that I'm using a VPN and visiting all these sites, and I'm doing everything pretty much anonymously, I haven't given them any of my data, they're probably making some sort of new profile, and they're just waiting for me to log into some sort of account so they could leak all this data 
to one of my existing profiles. Because um, until they can do that, they're pretty much out of luck. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. We'll go back to the IRS idea. Google, Google, you did so good. So, especially the IRS, um, there are lots and lots of privacy laws, and the IRS cannot share your data with anybody, even like your state government or even your employer or whatever, without something in writing from you. Um, you know, if your mortgage company wants something, they need to have something in writing from you. And unless you give them that, you know, you're pretty much, you know, the IRS is going to keep the data. So, so if somebody calls you up saying they have your IRS data, you know, I mean, look how bad they're trying to get Donald Trump's tax returns. And, you know, nobody's been able to get it. And they, they, somebody leaked a couple pages of one of the tax returns from a couple years ago. But for the most part, you know, the IRS is, you know, I'm, I am shocked that, you know, somebody at the IRS who has access didn't hack, hack and say, you know, I'll just get that data and leak it out. You know, it's, it's pretty shocking. And, um, you know, while I'm looking for all this stuff here, I'll talk to you about that a little bit. You know, the, the way the legal system and the taxing system is created is there's a lot of money given to real estate investors. And if you're a real estate investor, especially a commercial real estate investor, you know, they want you to build, build building, build big buildings, and they want you to build housing, and they want you to do all these things. Um, and in exchange, they give you a massive amounts of tax credits that you can build up. So somebody who does all of that usually has no tax obligation. And I would be 99% sure that that's exactly how our president worked. Um, you know, he's very, very smart and has pretty much done all these things to help figure out how not to owe money. So there, I can't see a way where he didn't do these massive um, tax benefits and, and this isn't just related to him pretty much every single leader you know nancy pelosi hillary clinton you know everybody on joe biden everybody does this with their investments because it is the best way um so if you go through and you can um do something where you get these tax benefits, you know, they last for many, many years, some of them 10 years or even more. So you do something that gives you a, say a $2 million credit. Well, that means even if, even if it takes 10 years, the next $2 million of income you create, um, you will not have to pay taxes on. And because that's how it works, and that is the way the law is set up, and because Donald Trump is following the law, as all these other people are doing, he doesn't, I would say, most likely have a tax obliga obligation. But the problem is, most people don't understand the system. They don't understand the way it works. So they work and they pay taxes, and they're going to look at someone like Donald Trump, who's a billionaire, and they don't understand that it's not him evading taxes. It's him following the system exactly how it was designed to be. It's been designed that way since before I was even born. So if he didn't follow the system and the way it is supposed to be, that would actually be illegal. So he is only doing what he's required to do. But... They're going to take that information and blame him about it. And that's exactly why he should never release his tax information. Um, I 
How about a lot of people talk about getting a refund. So anyway, that's about taxes. I'm just going to keep giving you a lot of little information. Um, let's see, Microsoft refund phone call. That might be useful. Yes, it was a scam. Let's go back up. Ah, so if someone received a phone call, so pretty much if you ever receive a phone call out of the blue, you know, I receive phone calls all the time. Oh, yeah. We like to, you know, I had one guy call me up the other day, and he wanted to get into my iCloud account and do all that. And, you know, he kept saying that, um, you know, your phone is going to you know, is calling people and it's costing you money and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, what, after quite a long time of him doing that, they, um, they finally asked me how many Apple devices I have. And my answer was zero. And that was after like 15 minutes of being on the phone. Uh, I thought that was really funny. So, yeah, as soon as I said zero, he basically had a couple choice words and hung up the phone. Report the call. Okay. So, let's see. 2018... Company was forced to close. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, I actually have a few of these on my voicemail. Hmm. I want to actually have the actual pop-up on my screen. So, I mean, I wonder if, to me, I really, really wonder how many people, I mean, fall for these tricks and, you know, like they have the, the similar tricks, like, like, you know, as a realtor, you need to know that people try to get your wire transfer funds. So like, for example, you know, they'll kind of figure out you're selling your house and they'll try to figure out who your realtor is and they'll get an email address um, and they'll, they'll, they'll create a fake email address from your realtor and, you know, with wire instructions saying, you know, please wire your, you know, your money to buy this house to this address or, you know, to, to, to this thing. And then they'll, and they'll actually change the wiring instructions. And, you know, I'm like, how can anybody be so stupid to fall for that? But yet almost every week I hear of somebody who was, and, you know, not like you know, it, you know, it's like how, you know, they're like, they just did it. And all of a sudden now $150,000 just went to, you know, nowhere. It, it's crazy. All right. Are you due a refund? So well, I guess this is where they're looking up places that Amway. <laughs> it's like an English Spanish dictionary and it searches external sources for how you do a refund. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. <clears throat> Do 
Did I finally find one? Nope. So, let's see. Maybe I need the settings. Maybe I'm missing the pop-ups here. Because this is really, really a testament to Google Chrome. You know, Google Chrome is actually really good. It, so let's go into Internet Explorer. Let's see, let's see, um, hi, let's see, mail, wow, Internet Explorer, wow, did you just crash? Would you like to make your Internet Explorer your default browser? No. Mostly just having fun talking to myself, hanging out with my YouTube friends. I should have went live on Facebook with this post. That would have been more fun. Okay, so let's see. Um, help me f fix my oh, printer. Let's try that. Now we're using the Bing search engine. Wow. Bing, Bing. Windows Maximizer, trusted by the App Esteem Award, proven, whatever. Um, I don't know. We'll figure out if that one's a scam later on. <laughs> Hello, tech. Major AV, okay. No. Trusted by the App Esteem again. I've never even heard of App Esteem. And now it's popped up twice on two different sites. So they're like, let's get a Vera antivirus, but up here it says McAfee. Man, what are they thinking? Get a refund. Um, what do we want to do? Get a refund from who? Who should we ask for? Well, maybe iTunes. We'll just. No, it's too easy. I more. Gem Gem. Yeah, Bing, you're not nearly as good as Google on this stuff. Um, best free screen savers. Remember, screen saver is something that runs. Background is something that's stationary. But yet, people think a screen saver is a background. Wow. I keep going to screensavers because back in the day, there were all these um, background apps, which they called screensavers, and they were horrible. My login helper. Let's, let's see what that's about. Now, hopefully you guys are learning something. This is kind of fun for me. Um, I was kind of hoping to be able to make a phone call and find a scammer I could actually talk to and I was gonna let you be on speakerphone and let you hear it all with my new microphone it should work pretty well but I haven't been I haven't found it I mean I found these numbers here I mean this is from last year so let's see 
saying blah 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 blah. Receive verbal call. Because Microsoft has shut down. Okay, let's call this number here. So let's go with um, 1 866. What's nice about this is that it actually costs them money. Um, they're paying not only for the 800 number, um, which that's like 10 cents a minute. So, I mean, this could really add up. Alright, let's see. And please listen carefully as our menu options may have changed. Calls are recorded for quality assurance. We're very excited to tell you about a special promotion for select callers. This will only take a moment. By answering just a few questions, we will find out if this offer is right for you. Just for calling in today, you have the opportunity to receive special pricing on TV, internet, and phone services from DirecTV. DirecTV is your source for the best in TV entertainment. Bundle Direct TV and high speed internet from AT&T so and get the best of both worlds for TV. one low price. To take advantage of this offer, press 1 now to be transferred to a Direct TV agent. Press 1 now to speak with a Direct TV agent about the special pricing on TV, internet, and phone services. Otherwise, press pound. Really? New Dish Satellite TV customers save up to $540 in their first year. Plus, you could receive free They're advertising direct TV and not advertising for Dish. Life, a free hopper upgrade and much more. Connect for details. To take advantage of this offer, press 1 now to be transferred to a Dish Network agent. So they're basically they're just Thank trying to get... Thank you for your get... interest in Dish. Please hold while we transfer your call to a Dish sales representative. They're just trying to get a commission. You know, hey, we sent over... Welcome to Dish. Customer. If you already have Dish or have an installation scheduled, please press 1. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Ah. Even on this virtual machine, Internet Explorer... I mean, we're running it. This is an old version of Chrome, and Internet Explorer is like a dog compared to... Um, it's running like a dog compared to um, Internet... Uh, compared to Chrome. Okay. Well, I don't think we're going to be successful finding some sort of phone number we can call for scammers. Um, free screensavers. Let's see. Freescreensavers.com I remember back in the day um, helping customers out. You know, we fixed com computers all the day, all, ta all the time. And it used to be that, you know, these free screensaver applications were one of the number one things that people would do. They'd, 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 they'd go there and they want to... They would want that free screen saver, even though, you know, so bad that they would just click whatever. It looks like the same ad is popping up everywhere. I wonder if I, because I clicked on that earlier. The funny part is I clicked on that link earlier in Chrome, and it's remembered my, some sort of cookie, even through Internet Explorer. It's very interesting. So what is going to go straight up and talk to us and do scam phone numbers? But, I mean, it is a lot better than it used to be. Ten was coming for a scam to look for. So here's how to know.
Okay, so let's search Google for that. Let's see, I have an, uh, I do, I do have a Canon printer here. Is this really Canon support? It doesn't look like Canon support. Oh, I... One... Three, nine, six, two. All right, let's dial it. Please hold while I... So we might be able to share our USB ports with our virtual box here. Thank you for calling. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it now. Or to dial by name, press star. Thank you for calling. I don't know. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it now. Or to dial by name, press star. Thank you for calling. Ah, okay. If you know your party's extension. Well. Here we go, MC Helper, 865. I think 865 is a toll-free number. 865. Okay, well, it's not a toll-free number, but at least it's somewhere that I know I can call for free on my cell phone, so. Hmm. Do we think this is in India? Some sort of... Wow, look at that. Are you kidding me? How much of this is repeated? Any of it? How many keywords did they just scam there? independent third-party service provider this one looks like fun all right so they have this 865 number which looks like an 866 or something which is a toll-free number but this is really a Tennessee number zero one six zero oh, dial yeah this is what we do when we're bored at two o'clock in the morning right for support press six for customer care hmm it didn't it died they hung up on me for support press six for customer care press seven seven Stay on the line while your call is being transferred to our customer service representative. Please note that this call may be recorded for internal quality and training purposes.
Your call is important so to I us. I wonder how long this works. Please stay on the line as your call will be answered by our first available customer service representative. Well, you don't Please need to stay hold me. Call may be but... recorded for internal quality and training purposes. <clears throat> so do we think this is a fake one or not? I mean, they definitely really, really promoted... The keywords are impressive. Power off. Please stay on the line while your call is being transferred to our customer service representative. Well, if you enjoyed this video, this call may be recorded for internal It's really long, so I don't know if you're even still here. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Um, I definitely am going to do some editing, vi edited videos later on. I um, did take a tour of Costco, and um, I'm going to review all their computers here. Maybe even tonight, I don't know. That'll be upcoming. <clears throat> Might even be posted before I post this video. So, um, check for that. We did the Walmart tour. It's already online. Um, Got to do some other stuff too. Our first available customer service okay. Please note that this call may be recorded for internal quality. Well, I don't think purposes. they're going to answer, so um, they're probably too busy with talking to other people. I wonder if you do um, need business loan. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. I'm not going to go over an hour here. I've already been on for an hour. Um, that's it. I'm going to stop recording. You guys have an awesome day. Um, if you like this microphone, it's the... Uh, I'll, I'll put the link to the microphone in the description. For, I mean, a $30 microphone. It, let me show you what it looks like. Might be making some noise here. It's actually pretty cool. It has a little dial right here. It's really nice shape, um, you know. This is also the microphone that a lot of uh, people use who are musicians on YouTube. It's it's a really high fidelity microphone from what they've been saying. So let me know. I'll put the link to this microphone in the thing. Um, I also have the my, you know, this Logitech 920C camera, I'll put a link to the camera in the post too, if you like this camera. Um, I'm recording this using the OBS Studio software, and as, as I said before, I'm using Oracle VM VirtualBox. I'm going to put links to those in the description also, so you could copy what I'm doing. It'll be nice and fun, and have an awesome day. Thank you.